Started here with Mississippi State, head coach Chris Lamonis is uh, joined tonight by catcher Dustin Skelton, DH Josh Hatcher, and starting pitcher Ethan Small. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, and we'll do questions for the student athletes, and then after questions for the student athletes, we'll go back to questions for coach. Floor is yours when you're ready. A great start by Ethan. I just think in that atmosphere, <clears throat> that environment, really good team in the other dugout to get a quality start from your starting pitcher is huge especially managing the first inning. First inning got a little crazy, and uh, Jake Mangum makes a great catch, but Ethan just keeps pounding the zone, and then he settled in. And, uh, really good day. Um, thought we had some great at-bats in those couple of innings where we scored and being able to string some, some hits together and just good A-Bs together, which has been what we've done all year long. That's been the strength, one of the strengths of our team, and I thought we played well defensively. I know Marshall Gilbert missed the ball in the first, but I thought he made some phenomenal plays uh, later in the game, so uh, fun to see. We'll start with Brett here to the player's right. Uh, Ethan, just how good of a view did you get on that home run that, that Mangum saved at the wall? And, and what do you think when he's off? Well, oh, my neck almost snapped trying to turn around and watch it. So, <laughs> uh, no, it was a great catch, though. I wasn't sure how far it was going to go. And then when he made it, I was pretty far enough. Go ahead and get it here to Steve in the middle. Ethan, obviously a, a big moment for you uh, leaving the mound there. Final start in Duty Noble Field. What was going through your mind as you left the mound? <clears throat> kind of just, I, I can't even explain it. I don't know that I had any ideas in my head. I was just kind of, been, kind of embracing it and looked up at the crowd and just listened to it one last time, kind of coming off. And uh, just a really special moment. Um, and it, I don't think it's really sinking. That's my last time doing it. I mean, it, it, I've been here for so long and just pitched so many times in front of that crowd and that atmosphere that just, doesn't seem real that it's over. Go to Brian here, middle second row. Ethan, just for me, watching you, it felt like this start you had to grind more than any maybe any other start you've had this season. Just from a mental standpoint, how tough was tonight? Pretty tough. Um, my biggest challenge tonight was kind of fighting myself, especially early. And then uh, we have some good bounce back innings in between there and finally start punching some guys out. But uh, yeah, tonight I was kind of fighting myself. Um, and then the biggest thing, for me tonight was going off the changeup and then working those two pitches together. Go ahead, Joel, second row to the player's right. Dustin, you as catcher you might have had a better view of that ball in the first inning than Mangum Rob than, than anyone. Did you think it was gone off the bat? Just what was kind of your thoughts on, on, on that? And uh, did you think it was gone? Yeah, I, I thought it was gone off the bat. Uh, I knew he, he kind of got under it, but I knew when Jake was headed towards the wall, I was like, oh no, this might get out, this might have a chance. But when he got up in the air, I heard the, uh, the, the other dugout go, oh my, he might hit this over the batter's eye. So I was like, no, I don't think this is going that far. So yeah, he, he, he got pretty good, uh, pretty good metal on it, so. Go ahead, go to Ben here to the players uh, left on the front row. Dustin, you got I think, four multi-hit games in the last five. I mean, what's working for you at the plate the last two weeks, really? And what worked for you tonight? Oh, I was just think working on staying in my legs. Uh, I think that's the biggest key. You know, I just need to stay in my legs, stay behind the ball, and uh, stay that right center throw gap. That's where my swing plays, so I just need to let the ball travel, stay in my legs, and hit it that way. Go to Steve here in the middle second row. Josh, a couple big hits for you tonight. You and Marshall both kind of sparked some rallies. What is it about the bottom third of the order that lately's had some good quality at bats? Um, you know, we have a complete lineup, and Hitting down there, you can just you just gotta try to get on base, you know, string good at bats together for a jig in the top of the lineup and then just do what they've done all year. So I mean hitting down there, it's just trying to have great at bats, each and every at bat, win pitches and try to get on base. Go to Tyler here on the left side front row. Ethan, I think you were up around hundred pitches after the fifth inning. Mean, how much lobbying did you have to do to go back out there for the sixth and how comfortable were you that you could get the job done like you did in the sixth? Yeah, um, at that point, I felt like I was kind of on cruise control. Um, so I wanted it. I don't know that I had to fight for it too much for it. Um, and that was kind of the realization, like, this is my last inning. Like, I know it's going to be my last time. So really had to buckle down and kind of close it out from there. We'll stay left front row with Ben. Josh, you've been a staple in the lineup really the last kind of three weeks in South Carolina. And obviously, the middle portion of the season was kind of in and out. I mean, how different is it for you now, knowing kind of day to day you're going into it starting, and how much does that maybe help you keep consistent? Um, you know, it helps, but even if that's not the case, you know, you have to be mentally prepared every single day, day in, day out. You know, you have to get your work in, 
you have to know that when your name's called, that you can step in there and do what you do what you came here to do. Go ahead and get it here to Teddy here to the front right of the players. Dustin, uh, just what, what did you see from Ethan tonight, and, and what did you think of of his performance uh, over the last few weeks? Uh, I saw a really good fastball command, as we all saw, you know, the whole year. Um, that's, he's just a bulldog when, when it comes to the, those Friday night starts, and, and uh, just whenever he gets his, his chance to throw, it's it's absolutely un unbelievable. Any other questions from the student athletes? We'll go ahead to Brian and Steve. Dustin, what goes through your mind when uh, they put Foskey on intentionally and then pitched to you there early in the game and sort of broke it open with your with your double? Uh, I, I knew I was going to get a pitch I could hit, and I just wanted to put a good swing on it, and uh, I got a fastball away and was able to put a really good swing on it. So. Ethan, uh, we've seen much more polished product out of Dustin <coughs> Skelton this year. You know, it's his battery. Made, what's he maybe made you a better pitcher this year? Uh, as far as like all the catchers I've ever pitched to, I think he's got to be the best receiver I've ever pitched to. And I'd say that not as because he's my teammate, because it's true. And like the dude steals more strikes than anybody I've ever seen. And uh, I mean, he's knocking the heck out of the ball. And you're seeing that on the field. And he's just just probably the most improved guy on our team. I mean, he's just really rounded out and a complete player now. Anything else for the student athletes before we let them go? All right, thanks, fellas. We'll see you tomorrow. Go ahead and start with questions for Coach. We'll go to Brett. Uh, scary moment there in, in the seventh with, with Jack. What, what can you tell us about his status? What do you know? <clears throat> I'm still finding out myself. He had a medical issue. They say he's stable, and as soon as I leave here, I'll try to find him, touch base with him, and, and see how him and his family are doing. Go ahead and get it here to Steve in the middle. When that, when he departs, you still got a ball game to play. I mean, how, how difficult is it to, to kind of get control of the dugout again to get those guys focused on ball game? It was tough. I mean, it was tough. It was a tough probably five, ten minutes for our team. and um, Just a group of guys that just uh, that care a lot about each other. So when you see one go down like that, it was tough on everybody. That's all I got on that. We'll go to Brian. So I want to ask you the same question I asked Ethan. Did you feel like he was having to grind a little bit more tonight than you normally would see from him? I did. Outside, I said, well, he didn't look as comfortable. And he said, Coach, I'm always comfortable. But I just, you know, but I, I did. I felt like, and I think you give a little credit or a lot of credit to Stanford hitters. I think earlier they came out with a good approach. Um, but it's nice. Ethan had one earlier a couple weeks ago that he kind of came out like that. And then all of a sudden, man, he fell into a groove. The Vanderbilt, right? I thought he was a little uncomfortable early. And um, then he got into a groove and he rolled like he got loose. So um, he's just such a competitor. It's just if the stuff is good or great, it, he just still wins. Go ahead to Hunter in here, second row. Is there any weight kind of lifted off of your shoulders, winning that first, getting that first win out of the way, knowing that you got still two more to work with? There's just just get the next win. That's the I don't know about weight off your shoulders, but. It puts us in a good position. I think we're in a good position with our bullpen. We didn't have to use, you know, everybody got thrown in it tonight. Um, and I think we're in a good spot to be able to come out and play good baseball tomorrow. Go ahead and get it to Ben, front row to coach's left. Coach, you're getting a lot of ball nights out of both Josh and Dustin kind of toward that bottom end of the lineup. I mean, how, what have you seen from those guys in the last couple of weeks? And, I mean, how, how much added bonus is that kind of at that bottom of the lineup? It, it's been like that all year. We've had guys just contribute um, and have the hot guy in there. When Josh is good, he's as good as anybody in our lineup. Uh, we got Rowdy down there. I mean, Rowdy's been, I thought Rowdy, I don't even know if he got a hit tonight, but he had two two missiles he hit that they caught, I know. Um, Dustin Marshall had some big at-bats. And anybody we put in there, our, our lineup, uh, Coach Gotro and Coach Cheese have done a great job with our hitters. And there's a lot of buy-in to, you know, hey, this is the type of offense we are. We're going to grind you out. <clears throat> and um, the depth of our lineup, like I've said all year, is, is the strength of our lineup. Any questions for Coach? Have time for a couple more. We'll go back to Steve here in the middle, and then we'll get it to Rick here in the front. Uh, a lot of coaching hires in the offseason. You, you stepped into a team that went to Omaha. A lot of fans were like, Omaha or bust this year. Now you're, you're a win away. So uh, what's your mindset as far as your expectations right now? You know, we spoke after the game. It's, it's about staying in the moment. 
Um, I know it's easy to talk about Omaha and <clears throat> everything else, but and that's obviously the goals of this program. But um, man, we got a good team in the other dugout. We have to get a good night's sleep, get a good meal, get hydrate, and we got to come out and play good tomorrow. We can't, you know, we can't look ahead. It's uh, taking care of business tomorrow is huge. Chris, do you ever start taking for granted the kind of plays that, that Mangum makes? I mean, that was huge. That was a huge play. He told me after the game, that was the first one he'd ever robbed. So um, I said, that's pretty amazing because I've seen you make a lot of great catches. But um, he just helps you win games in so many ways. It's just that I'm just, it's just day in and day out, uh, the way he shows up and plays. And, um, but it was a huge play. I mean, that was a huge play in this ball game. Anything else for a coach before we let him go? We'll go ahead and get it to Teddy. I know Nathan's come up big for you all year long, but to see that uh, on this stage, just what are your thoughts on uh, the way he closed out his, his career here? Who, Ethan? Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, you know, it, it was awesome. I mean, I, I wish I could have taken him out and let him walk off the field, but I just went <laughs> too tight of a game. Um, but he is just such a competitor. Just, uh, I mean, it is it's so fun to coach him on and off the field. And uh, what he's done for this ball club and this program is, is huge. And, I'm, you know, we're ecstatic for him. I know with the draft over, and, having a chance to continue his career. Um, just a special player here. And, and it's been, I've said it about Jake, but it's true about Ethan and a lot of the guys. You know, it's, it's a shame, you know, I wish I could coach him a lot longer, um, but I'll take one year with those guys. They're very special players. All right, thank you, Coach. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.